So now we're going to look at part two of solving equations, specifically looking at equations that take multiple steps and not just one step to solve. Before we look at examples, uh, we're going to look and kind of review the order of operations. Now remember when we are uh, simplifying any expression or figuring out any number, we use the order of operations PEMDAS, or uh, you may know, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. And what that means is, as we go through things, we first find any parentheses or grouped fractions, simplify that, then do any exponents, then together do multiplication and division from left to right, and then last, there should only be addition and subtraction, and remember it doesn't have an order, you just go left to right doing addition and subtraction. Now when we're solving equations, we actually think of going the opposite direction from addition and subtraction all the way to parentheses. Now when we're solving equations, we may uh, simplify some things first using PEMDAS and using distributive property combining like terms, but then our goal is to get x by itself by moving things from one side of an equation to the other. When we move things, we first start with moving anything that's addition and subtraction, then we move anything that's multiplication and division, and last we move anything with exponents and parentheses. Hopefully we've simplified so there aren't any. That would come very last. So we want to think opposite order of our order of operations as we do these. So we're going to look at six examples. I'll have some uh, different things going on and we're just going to look at how do we solve for x when we have this type of equation. So we'll start with 5x plus 2 equals 12. Now we've looked at what happens if we have 5x, what happens if we have x plus 2, but not both at the same time. Well, we want to remember we start by moving addition and subtraction and we want to get x by itself. So what we're going to want to do is move this 2. Plus 2, we would subtract 2, and we'd get 5x, this becomes 0, equals 10. Now, we don't have any more addition and subtraction. I'm going to change colors here. But we do have multiplication, 5 times x, so we're going to move that over by dividing by 5. And 5 divided by 5 is 1, so we get x equals 2. And we can always check our answer. 5 times 2 is 10, plus 2 is 12. 12 equals 12 is correct, so this is our answer. So this one is very similar to this one. So if you want, you could pause the video right now and try this on your own before we go over it. Okay, so now we're going to look at negative 3x minus 9 equals 15. So we'll put our equation bar here, doing the same thing on both sides. And 3x minus 9, we'll start with subtraction and addition. So the minus 9 we want to move over by doing plus 9. So negative 9 plus 9 is 0. So we have negative 3x left on the left side. 15 plus 9 is 24. And then all we have is multiplication left. So to do the opposite, we divide negative 3 divided by negative 3, do the same on both sides, we get x equals 24 divided by 3 is 8, with a negative we have negative 8. So hopefully if you practice that, that's what you got. Now let's look at some different examples here. Uh, here is one where we'd have to, we have parentheses. So we could do a, a number of different things to start this, but I think the easiest way is just start by simplifying using the distributive property. So we're going to simplify 2 times 4x plus 1 by putting the 2 into both things. So we get 8x plus 2. And we'll still just make our little equation bar there, even though we haven't moved anything yet. And that still equals negative 22. Now we have an equation just like before. Start with addition and subtraction. Subtract 2 from both sides, we get 8x equals negative 24. Divide by 8, we get x equals 24 divided by 8 is 3, 
and the negative makes it negative, so we get negative 3. So if we see parentheses like this, and thing, or things that we can combine like terms, we can do that first before we start moving things back and forth in our equation. And now let's look at one where we have a fraction. So we saw these in the one-step equations, uh, but now we're going to look in a multi-step. But we don't actually look here first because, remember, addition and subtraction first. So we want to move 13 away from the side with x. It's plus 13, so we'll do minus 13. And do that to both sides. We get negative 8 on the right side, negative x over 5 on the left side. Now, we talked about when we have a fraction, this is division. We are dividing by negative 5. The opposite of dividing is multiplying. Now, the negative is out front, but we can put it with the number. So we'll just multiply by negative 5 on both sides. Those will cancel there. So we'll be left with x. And then negative 8 times negative 5. Negative times a negative is a positive, and that is 40. And we can always confirm, negative 40 divided by 5 is negative 8, plus 13, that's 5, equals 5, so this is our answer. So all four of these examples we've seen, where we have x on one side, in the left side, it, it would be the same idea if it was on the right side. We want to get x by itself. But what happens if we have x on both sides of the equation? We still follow our order by looking at addition and subtraction first, but we might have to do multiple movements with addition and subtraction. Notice here we have 3x minus 4 equals 2x plus 1. One thing that we have is x's on both sides. So the first thing we want to do is we need to get x's just on one side. Uh, I prefer making it so that wherever we le are left with x, we have it positive and not negative. So 3x, we would subtract 3x, but then we'd have negative here. The other one we can do, if we subtract 2x here, 2x minus 2x, that is 0. Then we would do the same to the other side, 3x minus 2x, we have 1x, still minus 4, equals 0 plus 1. So remember, there's no x anymore because 2x minus 2x is just 0. Now we still have addition here because we have x minus 4 and we need the 4 to be on the other side. So we add 4 on both sides. 0 plus 1 plus 4, that is 5. And here, negative 4 plus 4 is 0. We just have 1x or x equals 5. So take a look at this sixth, number six problem and pause the video. See if you can try the, do this one on your own. And when you're done, unpause the video to see the answer. Okay, hopefully you've gotten to try this. 7x minus 5 equals x plus 3. Uh, so there's two ways you can do this depending which side you bring x's to. I like having positives, so I'm going to take negative 7x and add 7x. And I have to do that to both sides. So these cancel, so we're just left with negative 5. It's x plus 7x, so that's 1x plus 7x is 8x plus 3. We still have some addition, minus 3. We have 8x equals negative 8. Now we can move to the multiplication and division. Divide by 8 on both sides. We get x equals 8 divided by 8 is 1. The negative makes it negative 1. So no matter what your algebra problem is, our goal is to get x to be alone on one side of the equation and all the numbers to be on the other side of the equation. So if that means you have x's on both sides, it means you want to get x's to one side of the equation and then uh, move all the numbers to the other side. And if x is already on one side, then you want to follow our algebraic order of operations going backwards, moving addition and subtraction, then moving multiplication and division. And by doing that, 
If we follow that, we get x by itself on one side and get our answer. So now that you've seen the video, try the practice assignment, and when you feel ready, go on to the assessment.